Okay, welcome everyone uh, to the um, first of the risk management strategies. So I've got uh, myself and Simo Turvenen, uh, who will be co-hosting this. Um, Simo is also on the line. Simo, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to run this a little bit different to um, the main presentation. This is a bit more of a uh, a question and answers. Um, we're, we're going to run through the case study and it's for people to be able to, we've got 54 participants, so we've got quite a few. Hopefully we can get to everyone's questions. Um, as Rod touched on uh, at the beginning, if there's any uh, questions relating to any government policy, we've got uh, Jared, I think. Yep, Jared um, from uh, Jew is also in the room, so I'll, I'll just point to him and he'll be able to answer any of those questions for you. Um, so, Buzz and Jakes, we've engaged our person to um, deliver the content with this webinar. If you've got any follow-up questions, um, uh, our email has been sent out. Um, we're happy to uh, follow up. If we don't get to all, uh, all of your questions here, they will be recorded so we can see who sent them um, and we'll endeavour to uh, get to those uh, at the end if we can't get to all today. But we've got 30 minutes. Um, presentation's probably going to take about 10, 15 minutes, and then we've probably got 15 minutes for questions. Um, so what I'm going to do is, if everyone in, in, in the Zoom, how I'm going to run the questions, you can either use the chat function. Uh, if you just want to put your question in there, I'll go from the top and um, run through any of those uh, and, and answer them. Uh, as, as they come in. Um, alternatively, in the, in the Zoom function, um, if you click on the participants, there's a, there's a section there where you can raise your hand. So if anyone wants to just, I can unmute you um, and you can just ask a question live here and we can just have a discussion about it. Um, everyone's muted at present, um, just to say, so we can, we don't have a hundred people talking at once, um, but I'll, uh, I'll unmute you and then, uh, if your hand's raised, and I'll just run through the list um, for those who've got questions. So today we're going to we'll look at a couple of, um, uh, we've got two case studies, um, and we'll just touch on the first one, um, see if we've got enough time. We'll go into the second one quickly, but um, Simo's going to take over. Simo, I'll, I'll run through the slides um, if you um, are ready. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Stuart. Uh, just a I want to reiterate the disclaimer Rod made in the earlier session that this is uh, not financial or professional advice. It's it's general in nature uh, and it's just a general overview of, of uh, options that are available in, in certain real world situations for you to manage your, your requirements. Uh, so basically uh, the first case study we are looking at uh, is uh, well a situation where Many of the growers I would envisage are uh, right now, so they have some allocation left on their account. Uh, so in, in this specific example, they have a 500 megaliter class three entitlement in, in the SA Murray, have 100 megs left on the, on the account, and they are just uh, weighing their options in terms of, uh, of uh, what do they want to do uh, in, in, with that excess water. So basically we're going to cover three broad options. One, use your own class three carryover capacity to, to uh, bring that water across. Option two, park water in the state, uh, either in New South Wales or Victoria, and return to South Australia next year. Uh, and the third option would be to sell that remaining allocation now and contract forward water uh, to be delivered next year. So we're gonna have some examples of, of the indicative cost of each option and 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 uh, in the in the subsequent uh, slides. Uh, so if we move on to the next slide, Stuart, first looking at the uh, the option number one. So if you're using your own twenty percent uh, carryover capacity, obviously there are many pros there. Uh, the most important ones being well, there is no cost associated with using your own entitlement uh, to carry water over. And it's also automatic. So given that you have submitted your water meter readings by the end of July, you don't need to apply uh, carryover. It is, it, it is automated. 
However, there are some considerations you should be mindful of. Uh, most importantly, uh, the risk of spill. Uh, so uh, according to the private carryover rules in, in South Australia, Mari, if class three announced allocation next year increases to over 80%, the water that would take your account above 100%, so carryover and allocation combined, uh, will not be available for that year, but it will roll over to the next year. Uh, and it may be available then, if, if the 21-22 season is, is set to open at less than 50% allocation. But there is a risk that the water you carry over may not be available for you next year if allocations for class three increase to uh, about 80%. Also the timing of, of the carryover as Jared uh, indicated uh, in the previous session, it, it won't be available uh, right from the get go, July uh, uh, one uh, in, the, in the next uh, water year. So it has a couple of uh, months uh, wait period before you can actually access. So if, if you need water before that, uh, and th that depends on your individual situation. Like some growers might have a fairly stable uh, uh, water requirement month on month, whereas some uh, other crops, they don't need water that much at all in, in July and August, but it may be a consideration. Also consideration, if you have more water, uh, more excess water at the moment on your account, more than 20%, you'll need to park that water elsewhere anyway, because 20%, that's the maximum you can carry over with your SA entitlement. And obviously, if you don't have excess water uh, on your account right now, you need to buy that from the market uh, and that will require some, some cash to, to do so. Then the next option, uh, Stuart, if we move on to the next slide, uh, park water in the state and, and return to South Australia next year. So we had many questions already in the previous session about how, how does this happen? What are my options? Uh, we've had some questions if you know, parking in Victoria is, is any different to parking in New South Wales. So we're gonna cover all of those in the examples we're gonna have uh, in, in the next couple of slides. But generally parking water, it's a, it's a fairly straightforward process uh, to protect, protect your excess allocation water you wanna carry it over. So it's basically, uh, a matter of, of, of contracting someone else's uh, carryover space. And it, it, it's, it's all done via allocation transfer. So you basically move water out of your account, to someone else's account, and then return it the next year. And, and it is uh, possible to get that water return, return to you early in the new season. This is all uh, determined by the specific contracts for you make for parking, but typically, getting that water delivered uh, early on in the season in July is possible. However, there are some considerations you need to be mindful of uh, with this option as well. Yeah. Importantly, uh, can you find suitable holders or counterparties to, to park your water in terms of risk of spill? And the risk of spill, it varies uh, between uh, states, Victoria and New South Wales, but also the entitlement types in Victoria. So for instance, uh, lower risk entitlements, such as Victorian low reliability uh, entitlements in the zone seven, Murray Below Choke, they typically attract a higher price for that service, simply because you know, it's, it's basically uh, risk-free in terms of spill risk. Whereas all contracts were placers, so the party who has that water, they wanna place on someone else's account, if they bear the spill risk, uh, comes with a lower cost, but it may result you in not getting that water back or, or you having to pay back water to the holder if spills occur. Uh, and also the zone where you park the water, it's is important because of the trade limits Rod and Stuart uh, introduced in the previous section. So for instance, if you park water in the Marambiji or, or in the Goulburn or above Choke, these trade limits may mean that getting that water uh, transferred back to South Australia may be, may be compromised. And also there's a 5% evaporation loss in all water that is uh, carried over in Victoria. 
uh, in New South Wales, there is no evaporation loss, but uh, finding carryover space uh, that is secure uh, may be harder to find. And in, in general, uh, what, what is the total cost for megaliter for this service? Uh, what are your options? Are there cheaper alternatives? So we're gonna have a couple of examples uh, in, in the next two slides. But uh, just a refresh on the interstate carryover rules, which are really important to, to, uh, to uh, acknowledge when you park water. So they vary between entitlements uh, and, and the uh, catchments. So in the Victorian Murray and Goulburn, both with high and low reliability entitlements, you can use, you can carry over 100% of the entitlement volume. However, if the volume you carry over and the announced allocation for your entitlement, if they exceed 100% of your entitlement volume, the excess water goes to a spillable account, which can only be accessed when a low risk of spill is, is declared. So, and this is a major consideration if you carry water over with, with a high reliability entitlement, because those are typically yielding allocation throughout the year. So if you carry over, for instance, the full 100% of your entitlement and you receive some allocation, any excess water goes to a spillable account. And if you know uh, the storage is spill, if the authorities they declare, uh, if the storage is fill and spill in 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 in, uh, in, in, in the uh, human dart now, no, sorry, it's it's just uh, like Hume. Uh, yeah, you might lose your water, and this happens every now and then, like in 2016, 2017, when we had major inflows. Uh, all of the water that was carried over using a high reliability entitlement, it, it, it was written off because the storage is uh, spilled basically. Uh, in, and also the 5% uh, evaporation risk, uh, evaporation loss uh, is a consideration. In, in New South Wales, uh, just quickly, Murray and Murrumbidgee, uh, up to 50% of the channel security entitlement can be used in the Murray for carryover and 30% uh, in the uh, Murrumbidgee. In the Murrumbidgee, uh, allocation plus carryover cannot exceed 100% of the entitlement volume. In the Murray, it's 110%, which means that uh, there's a secure guaranteed 10% proportion of the entitlement that cannot spill. So that's secure. If you, you know, if, if you, your water is, is, is uh, parked using that guaranteed spill risk-free uh, uh, proportion of the entitlement, uh, it, it cannot spill, there's no evaporation loss. So all of these things, uh, they are important to recognize. And the contracts for parking, uh, they vary depending on who bears the spill risk. Uh, so the third option, uh, you can sell your remaining allocation, basically get a cash injection right now. Uh, you, can, uh, and you can secure some forward water for next year. Uh, and the pro is that there is no risk of spill that you need to uh, factor in with forward water. There's a volume that is guaranteed for you in the next year. And also you can lock in the price now, you have to pay a deposit. Uh, typically it's about 20%, depends on the service provider. And then you pay the rest upon delivery of water next year. Some consideration that there's a, a price premium for, for forward water. Typically, uh, like well, we're going to have some examples later on, but it, it is there's a it can be a significant premium to current spot market price with forward water. Also, the zone of delivery again, you know, trade limits might have an impact in terms of returning that water, and also delivery time. So if, if you need water early on in the new year, you need to find a seller who can commit to uh, getting that water to you in, in June. August, September, and there may be price differences for, for different delivery times. So then if we move on to some indicative examples, well, what is the actual cost you know, of, of using these options? And uh, I should stress that these indicative uh, uh, calculations, uh, they are exclusive of all brokerage fees, so commission and admin fees uh, used by the brokers and intermediaries. Uh, they vary between service providers, but um, basically as a rule of thumb, uh, for both forward water and parking, the, 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 uh, the fees would be fairly similar. You can add a couple of dollars per megaliter, maybe three, four dollars per megaliter to 
the, the cost estimate we have here in these slides, but you need to discuss with your broker about the actual uh, broker fees that they charge. But basically, these examples, they outline uh, some options, uh, parking in Victoria, parking in New South Wales, and selling allocation now and buying forward water. So basically, you know, uh, the cost uh, comes from the parking cost. So we estimate here in this example that the cost to park uh, your water is $60 per megaliter. And we assume here that you, you don't have to worry about the uh, spill risk here. So you, you found some parking space where the holder will, will bear the spill risk. And we also assume that you can find parking space in a location where it can be returned to you in the new year without trade limits uh, having an impact. So in addition to that uh, actual cost of, of the parking space, there are fees, uh, just the regular application fees, transferring water out of your South Australian account to Victoria and then back. So two sets of fees, both when you place the water and when water is returned. And the, the transfer fees for, for next season, they are bound to change. Typically they increase a bit year on year, but either way, uh, uh, this is a sim simplistic example. Uh, if, the, if the cost of parking is the same in New South Wales and in Victoria, they will end up uh, you know, with a total cost per megaliter of, of roughly $70 per megaliter. It, it is important to acknowledge that you will lose that 5% in Victoria for evaporation. So you get 95 megs returned, whereas in New South Wales, you get full 100 megs uh, returned. If we compare this cost to you know, selling your allocation now, if you can get 250, uh, I know the market has softened uh, in a, uh, today uh, to close to $200 per megaliter, but if you could get 250 and if you could lock in forward water at 500, you know, the total cost per megaliter would be 250. So it, 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 in this example, you need, it, it's much cheaper to, to, to use parking compared to, to uh, forwards. However, um, if we go to the next slide, you, you may also need to uh, factor in the 5% loss. So there's an opportunity cost associated with that, you know, in a way that you won't get back the full 100 uh, megaliters. So, the, and the opportunity cost comes from a situation where you could basically sell that five max to the market right now, uh, if you can get 250 uh, of that, basically then, no, sorry, that's actually for 200. Uh, but anyway, if you factor in the opportunity cost, then parking in, in New South Wales is actually uh, uh, more affordable, but it may be harder to find parking space in New South Wales that is secure. Well, what, what in the next slide, hypothetically, what if the forward price actually comes down because the spot market has softened what if uh, the forward market can softens as well to $300 per megaliter? Well, in that uh, situation, it actually might may be cheaper for you to sell your remaining water and contract forward water. The unit cost comes to $53 per megaliter uh, in, in that scenario. But it all, all basically comes down to if, if the forward market softens or not. But there are many uh, considerations when you want to compare these options. Then if we look at the uh, last example, what if you're happy to, to bear the spill risk? If, because as I mentioned, the cost of parking uh, when you bear the spill risk uh, is, is much lower. It can be as low as uh, $5 per megaliter if you park your water in Victorian high reliability uh, entitlement. Uh, so obviously then the cost uh, is much lower, uh, sub $30 per megaliter in, in this example in Victoria. Or in, in New South Wales, if you are happy to take the spill risk, uh, the unit price is, is much lower as well. So if you're happy to take the risk, the cost of the product uh, is much lower. However, uh, as I mentioned, uh, there are a couple of considerations like the in Victoria, if you park your water uh, this way, when you bear the spill risk, uh, depending on the contract, uh, uh, it might stipulate that you can only get that water back when the low risk of spill is declared by the Victorian government. 
and the timing of this varies. Like this year, because it was dry, it was declared 1st of July, uh, so the first day of the season. But historically, it's been between July and February. So it may be, mean that you won't get your water back uh, uh, you know, anytime soon. Are you happy to take that risk? You know, that's up to you and your risk profile. Same with New South Wales. Uh, it depends on the on the contract you you have uh, signed signed up for, but you may end up not getting your water back, or you might have to pay back uh, the water that's spilled from from the uh, holder's account. So, in this situation, if you're happy to to take the punt, well, uh, you might also just want to consider using your own carryover space because that's there's no cost there. Yeah, you you might still lose access to that water next year, but it, it's free. Uh, so, you know, it, it comes down to your individual risk profile, also your financial position. You know, if you have uh, uh, access to, to, to different products and, their, and, and the cost that is associated with them. So, but there are many, many uh, uh, considerations to factor in here. Uh, Stuart, should we take questions now or? Yeah, I think so. We've got, uh, it's 21 minutes, so we've got about 10 minutes left. Um, there's a couple of questions come through in the chat. Um, we've answered a few of them. High reliability versus low reliability carryover. Um, I think we uh, talked and touched on that briefly. Um, yeah, basically the, the benefit of carrying over with, with low is related to that risk of spill. So there's a very low likelihood of you losing any water if, you, if your water is parked in the Victorian low reliability entitlement, simply because these entitlements, they don't get allocation. Only once you know, ever has Victorian Murray low reliability received an allocation, and that was 5% in 2016, 2017. So that means that water is very unlikely to go to that spillable account. Uh, and and Therefore, the risk of, of losing water that is carried over or parked, it's, it's very low. Mm. And, you know, touching on that, yeah, there's a question if an irrigator needs to be aware of interstate spill rules. Yes, broadly speaking, yes. It's, it's at least important to acknowledge these so that you can ask your broker or exchange or intermediary about these. They should be aware of all of these. They should know how water accounting works and what is the risk of spill. And they should be able to explain to you, well, if you do this, do it this way, park it in high reliability in Victoria, low reliability in, in, uh, in Victoria, what's the difference? Is there a risk for me to lose this water? The same with New South Wales, general security. And there's another question. Uh, well, what is the spill risk on Victoria and high reliability? Well, it's basically a risk of the storage is uh, filling up and water spilling from, from the carryover or the spillable accounts. So if we get major inflows, if, if storage is actually uh, are filling up uh, and, and spilling that way, water on the spillable accounts is the first water that's, been, that's going to be written off. So that, that's basically the spill risk. At the moment, the spill risk in, for, in the Victoria Murray is it's about 50% that's uh, uh, announced by the Victorian government. So basically you only get access to water on that spillable account when that spill risk goes to below 10%. So that's when they declare low risk of spill and then that's when all water from the spillable accounts is available to you. Uh, then there's a question, is there a deadline when interstate trading will cease for this water year? The hard deadline is, is the last day of, of uh, season, 30th of, of June. However, there is some advice from uh, SA department. And if, if, if Jared, Jared is on the call, he can come in yep. on that, I suppose. Uh, yep. Simo, I could provide a bit more detail about uh, upstream as well. So yep. on the Murrumbidgee for any interstate trades, it's 11.59 uh, uh, p.m. on the 30th of April, uh, 2020, New South Wales, Murray, Again, 11.59, but the date is different. That's at 30th of June, uh, 2020. Again, 11.59 is the deadline. And in Victoria, for all systems, it's the uh, 16th of June. Mm -hmm. 
Jared. Um, I think we've got time for one more question. Um, Simo, did you want to, I think there's one in there. Uh, if water is parked from Gen Venus, if water is parked upstream, when it is brought back, can the, can the water used in the next, can the water be used in the next season be more than 100% IE allocation plus parked water? Well, Charity, you may want to comment on this as well. My understanding is that yes, you can, unless your site use limit has a, has a volumetric limit, which dictates that you can only use a specific amount. Uh, but Jared, do you have comments on that? Yeah, that's correct. Yep. Yep. So yeah, if you have you know spare room under your site use limit, then yeah, it is possible to use more than 100%. Uh, Okay, wonderful. Um, I think we'll probably wrap that up here. Um, I know there's a couple more questions. We'll, we've, we will endeavour to um, respond to those. Um, I've got a copy of those questions. I can see who's answered them and we can provide them back through the emails at the registration. Um, more than welcome to stay. We're just going to close for five minutes um, and everyone from the other session will be coming into here. More than welcome to stick around for again. Um, but uh, thank you everyone for joining.